Hello Cancer, welcome to Soul Good. I'm Amber Marie and this is your May 2023 Tarot Scope. In the description box below you will find all sorts of goodies to explore including a timestamp if you would like to jump to the start of your reading. I feel incredibly blessed to be here with you and am so looking forward to sharing with you a spread that I created looking at what have you conquered, where have or where are you gaining clarity, what do you have the opportunity to change, and what might you be celebrating now or in the future. So let's jump in and see what you've got going on for you. Please, Father, Mother, Life, Universe, Spirits, Guides, Angels, our cosmic team, our ancestors, our higher selves. Tell us, please, what has cancer conquered? What has cancer conquered? Thank you. Nice. I like that. <laughs> where have or where are, or excuse me, where has or where is cancer gaining clarity? Okay, Cancer, your cards are coming out really fast, and I like that a lot um, because it tells me that you're kind of, you're open, right? You may be even more open than what you've been in the past, especially in regards to your spiritual development, so I love that. What does Cancer have the opportunity to change, please? Thank you. Again, they're just flying out. <laughs> And what might Cancer be celebrating now or in the future, please? What might Cancer be celebrating now or in the future? Okay, thank you. Let's get some clarity. Tell us more, please, about what Cancer has conquered. Okay, this is the one. <laughs> where has or where is Cancer gaining clarity, please? All right. What does Cancer, I feel like I need to put this somewhere. I'm just gonna set that to the side. I don't know what that is, but I feel like there's something there. It was moving over here, so we're gonna just, we will check that out at the end of the reading. Okay, so what does Cancer have the opportunity to change? Please tell us more about that. Tell us more, please, about what Cancer has the opportunity to change. Okay, not those, definitely these. And I feel like these as well. Okay, so what might Cancer be celebrating now or in the future? All right, how would, okay, thank you. Can we please have some advice, guidance, or encouragement for cancer? Can we please have some advice, guidance, or encouragement for cancer? Thank you. We are going to, I feel, put this here with that. I feel like, I feel like this is part of your advice or guidance or encouragement. So we're just going to put that there. Okay. So what have you conquered, Cancer? You do have the octopus out here. And I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. Because I feel like something you've conquered is creating boundaries. Right? I feel like you're no longer allowing people to just trudge all through your experience, through your energy, in your space, with their muddy boots, with their nonsense, with their fuckery, with their whatever, right? I feel like, um, yeah, I really feel like there's been this kind of establishment or, or realization of this is how would you say it's interesting because I don't even know that you necessarily full on like know who you are or what your purpose is or what you want necessarily, but I do feel like you're beginning to, or have rather come to this space where you're starting to realize what you don't want. 
right? Or, or you're starting to create this bubble, if you will, around yourself where you're like, listen, Linda, no offense to the Lindas out there, by the way. Um, but it is that like, I'm not, I'm not just going to tolerate, you know, you walking all over me. I'm not going to tolerate you treating me any old type of way. I'm not just going to sit here. Right. Like I'm not, no, I'm not a Seven Eleven. I'm not just open to anyone and anything all the time. It's just not how it works. Which is very interesting to me because I feel like um, in some cases, so I don't feel like everyone will resonate with this, but I do feel like in some cases, this has likely strongly influenced your relationships, your friendships, changed them. I looked up just a moment ago when we were at five minutes, 55 seconds, that has changed, right? I feel like it's changed some of them because you're like, I'm not open for this. Whatever this is, I don't like it. Right. And, and that could feel differently for everyone. Right. Which is why I'm kind of being very vague, um, because I feel like depending on you, depending on your situation, this could be all sorts of different things. Although the octopus is an energy of like gossip or like oversharing or things like that. So, you know, you could have found yourself creating distance around those sorts of things for some of you, though, I don't feel like it's limited to only those things. I feel like this could be applicable to a vast array of experiences or feelings or situations, right? But I do feel like there have been boundaries created and I feel like you've conquered, how would you say, it almost feels like there's been this conquering of fear of boundaries or fear of, you know, what if people don't like me or what are they going to say or I don't want to be inconvenient or, I, you know, it's, it's, it feels kind of like that. But for the tarot, let's see what it ha what we have here to clarify. Wow, we have judgment in the reverse. Okay, so let me first off, first, first off, first off, pardon me, start by saying that the judgment coming out regardless, okay, even though it's in the reverse, says to me, because it is a major arcana card, that you are going through some big things in your experience currently. Um, the other thing that I want to share about this card in particular is that the judgment is just one card away from the end or last card in the major arcana. So that tells me that you've kind of been going through some things. Um, I feel like there's probably been a lot of things that have been coming up for you. I do feel like you're probably going through some level of awakening or have been going through a period of reflection, um, something like that. Okay. And I feel it's interesting because I do want to just clarify, like you may have already been going through a period of awakening, but there are levels to this. <laughs> okay. So, you know, you might be like, what do you mean? Like I've been going through awakening. Okay, fair. But you know, you'll go through certain levels at certain times and then sometimes you'll plateau and sometimes you'll, you know, backstep or sometimes there, there's all sorts of different ways this can unfold. Um, but there are several levels to this. So even if you've already been going through awakening, I'm not, you know, um, stomping on the work you've already done. I just feel like you could have been going through this period where there's lots of things coming up, lots of um, reflection taking place, um, you know, a certain awareness of self happening. But, but the judgment in the reverse can be a lack of perspective. It can be a skewed image. Um, it can be harsh judgment, especially of self. So kind of like a self-loathing or, you know, potentially like a, uh, like a doubt or it could, again, it can be kind of like a lack of, um, perspective or skewed in, uh, self image or, or lack of self awareness. And I feel like this is part of what you're, what you've been conquering. And I do feel right, because there is this element here that I was picking up on already of, you know, what if I create these boundaries and like people don't like me? So it's almost that like um, harsh judgment of self and kind of that lack of perspective, right? Taking on maybe different traumas or woundings from experiences you've had in the past, maybe not even in this lifetime, but perhaps others, though this lifetime is likely to apply as well or could. And I feel like, 
hard. How would I, how do I, it's interesting to me because I do feel like for you, part of what you've conquered cancer is, it's, it's so fascinating to me because it's, it's like, it almost feels, and this is not something I've encountered yet um, during this series. It almost feels like the, like the judgment is the key, like um, the, the more foundational energy, if you will, of the reading that that's coming through for this particular section. So in many cases, right, this would be the clarifier, but it almost feels to me like it's this way where the octopus is kind of the clarifier and the judgment is more the forefront energy because I feel like what you've conquered is literally, um, I, well, okay. It could be different for, for a couple of people. Like it could be potentially that lack of self-awareness or that lack of, um, perspective. Um, but I feel like for some of you, there is this conquering of your own self-loathing, right? And I feel like through that, you've created boundaries because I feel like you're now starting to awaken to or have awoken to your value and, and your own, I, like, like, how would I say yes, thank you. Like you've become aware of the value that you have, right? You've become aware of the importance of you and, and what you're doing and your, the world that you're in and the world in general, right? It's almost like you're awakening to more your truth, your soul truth, especially, uh, or divine truth even, because I feel like through that awareness that you've been gaining or, or have been, or, or conquering yourself and, and feeling like, I don't know, it feels like maybe you didn't feel like you're good enough. Maybe you felt like, you know, you don't deserve certain things or it, it feels very, very much like I was um, speaking on a little bit earlier, that very harsh, harsh, pardon me, judgment of yourself and that kind of self-loathing. I feel like you've been conquering that. And I feel like through that conquering, again, there's become or, or there's come this awareness of I don't have to just sit and take all this shit whatever that looks like. And, and I'm not saying that like your life is awful and this is something that you're dealing with like every single day. But I do feel like there's been some boundaries established where it's like, listen, I don't have to put up with this if I don't want to. I don't have to just sit back and shut my mouth and bite my tongue and whatever, or, or pretend like I don't have feelings or, you know, push my feelings down or whatever it is. Like, I just feel like there's been this, it, I mean, the word I'm getting, and I do, I mean this with the utmost respect, but it, it's that growing up as it were. Um, and, and I'm saying this from a spiritual level. I'm not saying you are ignorant or childish or anything like that, but I mean, from a spiritual standpoint, right? Even, even when we look at the tarot, you start out in the full position with the major arcana. That's like a child or birth or, in, or, or infantile type of space. Or even when we look at, say, the pages in the minor arcana, in the suits, that's a more novice or immature type of energy. And it has nothing to do with your age or any of that. It just has to do with your 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 development or your understanding or your spiritual awareness of certain things at certain times. And we're all navigating these novice or or immature energies all the time. Okay. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. We are all beginners at different levels of our experience. Okay. It, it's just how it goes. So I do feel like there's been this kind of like growing up. There's been this in, in a spiritual sense, this awareness of self, awareness of soul, awareness of divinity, awareness of your soul truth. And I do feel like this is something that you've been conquering, which has allowed you again to create these boundaries and establish like, I don't have to please everybody. I don't have to, you know, I, I hope that makes sense. Again, I feel like this is probably showing up in a lot of different ways for different people. 
and the boundaries that you may have created, I'm sure could be, you know, covering a, a, a wide array of things, but it does feel like that. It does feel like with this awareness and with this understanding of self, um, with this honest assessment of self, there's come this understanding of the need for boundaries and the value of them because it's like, now that I value myself, I see like I'm not a 7-Eleven, right? That's, that's kind of how I'm seeing this. So where have you or where are you gaining clarity? Okay, we do have the elk here. This is divine masculine or father energy. Okay, so I feel like, which is interesting AF to me because can, as a cancer, that is a more feminine energy. Male or female does not matter. We have both. We possess both energies, okay? And we navigate through them depending on our needs at any given moment. But with this elk energy coming out and being that representation of that masculine, I feel like where you're gaining clarity is that more where I need to be assertive, right? Where I need to be assertive, where I need to be more um, confident, more what's the word, decisive, right? Where, where I need to, to pull on inner strength and clarity and, and have courage. And again, boundaries. I mean, the masculine energy is one that's like, these are my boundaries and that's freaking it. Okay. So for example, and this is kind of like a, a funny, not funny joke, um, um, way of explaining this. But when you think of like a male, Okay, uh, uh, like an actual male gendered b individual. And if they're of masculine energy, if another person oversteps a boundary, you're probably going to watch a fight, like a physical fight, right? Because like, no, these are my boundaries. Or you or, you know, you're going to watch somebody say, that's it. I'm leaving. This is done. I've had enough. Right? Like there's there's not a whole lot of let me just push. Let me push. Let me push. I'm not saying that, that a masculine energy isn't flexible because it can be, but what I mean is there's an establishment of boundaries and there's this assertion and there's this decisiveness and there is this confidence in saying like, no, this is where the boundary is and you don't get to just do whatever you want. That's not how this works. Right? So that's kind of where I feel like you've gained this clarity through that conquering of your your own understanding of yourself right i'm going to pull out just very quickly the book here and just touch on the keywords for this elk energy so yes it says stable resilient headstrong and the father right so and, and then i'm going to read here just these um this little section here when in balance supportive kind and consistent when out of balance, pretentious, high and mighty to bring into balance, eat and drink more consciously. Okay. So this is that energy of, you know, I feel like it's like you're gaining clarity on where it's, it's almost like where you need to, or could provide yourself with more stability in your life. Again, being assertive, having boundaries, being confident um, and courageous Right. And, and I'm not saying you're like this huge pushover, but I feel like it's a balancing of that feminine and masculine energy. Okay. Which is interesting because the octopus here is that feminine energy. It is the water element and is more feminine. Let's see what else we have here for you. Also the cheetah. Okay. So, I mean, here's the thing like this is. First of all, this is fire energy, which is more masculine. Okay. Um, and this energy is often, I mean, it's showing up in the sense of, I feel like you are likely gaining clarity on where you need to slow down and I want to say like, Here's the thing. It's very interesting energy because I don't feel like you don't, you, you don't appreciate moments when you're in them, but I do feel like there's an element here of like rushing from one moment to the next. 
right? Like, like, like one moment to the next, like I've got, I've got this to do. I've got this to do. I've got this to do. And I feel like you maybe do try to appreciate the moments when you're in them, but it does feel like kind of like, I'm kind of seeing it like a bouncy ball or something, right? Where, where it's like, I'm trying to, to do all the things and get all the things and, and something, something similar. If this is for you, I'm sure you'll be like, oh yes, I know exactly what she's talking about. <laughs> right. Um, so, so there's this energy here of gaining clarity on like where you need to be slowing down and maybe even giving to yourself some more, right? Because again, um, I mean, the, and this energy comes through very often with this card of the energy of this, or rather life is a, mar a marathon, not a sprint. So it's not about going from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, and just rushing through everything or, or you know, bouncing all over the place. Like there's a need to slow down. There's a need to rest. There's a need to focus on yourself from time to time to time. And pardon me, there is fear coming up here. So I feel like this is something that maybe you haven't had the opportunity to do or haven't um, asserted <laughs> in the past. And uh, with, with this energy here of what you've conquered, I do feel like you may be growing more comfortable or have gained clarity in that, right? By creating these boundaries, like, look, this is, this is where I'm at and I can't do all the things and I can't like, like, I just need to slow down. Right. Let me, I do again, I want to, I want to pop in here and just read the keywords with this cheetah energy. Um, just to give you a little bit more insight. This isn't something that I've been doing a whole, whole lot. So interesting AF. I just want to point this out to you. Um, let me find it again here with the elk. Give me just a second. All right, there it is. So look here. Oh goodness, now I've lost the other one. What in the world is happening? Okay, there it is. <laughs> okay. So look here, okay, it says elk with the father, right? And it says the elk represents the earth element in its masculine form, okay? You can see that there, the top line. Um, now we're coming to the cheetah and look, masculine energy. So it's showing up again, right? So I feel like once again, there's this energy of, you know, embodying or bringing in more of that masculine energy into your experience. Now, I know I have, for whatever reason, I feel like I need to say this because I feel like there could be some fellas out there that are like getting a little, a little touchy, a little something, a little something about, about what I'm saying. Um, I'm not knocking on any men. Okay. I just want to be very clear. I'm not saying you're, you're girly or anything, okay? What I'm saying is this masculine energy, okay? When we look at divine masculine energy, it is an energy of strength, confidence, assertiveness, um, energy for achievement, which is what shows up right here, okay? It is dignity and curiosity and decisiveness and focus and reason and inner strength and responsibility, okay? Stability, having direction, it is again boundaries okay it, it it is they are characteristics if you will or traits of a natural or divine or sacred masculine okay and when those are out of balance sometimes it can come across as like having weaker boundaries and, you know, maybe not, not being as confident in ourselves, being very self-loathing, angry, confrontational, critical, avoidant, wanting to control things. And I'm not, again, I'm not knocking. We've all, we've all been through these energies, male or female, doesn't matter because we, again, possess both. So. I wanted to make that very clear, but it does say here about the cheetah again, where, um, where have, or where are you gaining clarity? The cheetah is the epitome of the solar forces at work. The sun doesn't shine onto the cheetah. It shines from inside this great creature and expands outward 
to brighten the universe. The energy within a cheetah personality is palpable to others, and they naturally attract an audience to bear witness to their remarkable achievements. Purpose and passion are the best fuel for a cheetah's forward momentum. So if you're lacking in those areas, reconnect to the why before you start running. When in balance, achieves anything boundless energy. When out of balance, impatient, competitive to bring into balance, reconnect to purpose, right? So I feel like you could be gaining clarity on your purpose, right? Again, this is solar force, action, achievement, and masculine energy. This is finding the light within yourself, which is very much like what we were talking about conquering here with the judgment in reverse, okay? And then coming back to the elk energy again, it's being stable in oneself, okay? Male or female, again, respecting their values, providing that stability and support, even through life's changes, right? So, I mean, I feel like this is, this is, this is, this is, this is pretty big. This is pretty big transformation, okay? You have here the Six of Cups, to clarify, which, first of all, let me just say, Sixes are about healing, harmony, alignment, adjustment, so again, bringing harmony, notice three cups on each side, as above, so below. So again, there's that element of bringing balance into your feminine and masculine energies. And then the six of cups overall, I mean, again, sixes can be also about growth or healing. And this is an energy of, how would you say, um, nostalgia? Um, restoration, memories. It can be an energy of goodwill and innocence and childhood. And so there could be, how would you say, you could be gaining clarity on maybe some things that occurred in your past, in your childhood, um, that maybe need, needed some focus, needed some healing. And this can be something, you know, it doesn't have to be oftentimes when we think of childhood, we think of our, our parents and, you know, or, or the adults in our lives or, or maybe some major experiences that happen. But I want to lovingly say that we can experience something that seems so friggin' insignificant, but leaves this programming or this story within us and affects us throughout our life. Right? It could be something as simple as, and I'm just sharing this so that I can put this into perspective. This could be something as simple as you being a child at the grocery checkout line and wanting a pack of gum and your parental guardian or, or parent telling you no and you believing and taking on this story of, oh, well, I guess what I want isn't important or doesn't matter. And then you carry that with you for your and for your life until you heal it. And it can affect every area of your life. And then the more you experience things where you feel like your feelings don't matter, you just reaffirm that story or that belief. And it grows and grows and grows. Okay, so I'm sharing this because I feel like there's something here, maybe from your childhood or from your past, where you've been gaining clarity in areas where you felt like you couldn't assert yourself or you couldn't create boundaries or you felt like you weren't enough or you felt like you, you know, for whatever reason, it stabbed or, or, or wounded your confidence, your ability to make decisions, something around that masculine energy, right? So I feel, again, you're gaining clarity on this. And I feel like you are being given the opportunity to heal those roots, right? So let's take a look here at what you have an opportunity to change 
we do have the spider here and I feel like this is about creating your own story weaving your own tapestry or or you know weaving your own web because the spider is about creating that web that you would call your life and I feel like this is about giving or, or having that opportunity to take control of that co-creative space in your experience and you have the opportunity to change that um for whatever reason I just want to check here I'm, I feel like I'm doing this a lot with your reading right now um which is a little bit odd but I just I follow my intuition and so we're gonna look at the spider I just want to look at the keywords because I feel like there's something I might yeah okay so yeah your dharma I mean your dharma is like your, it's your life purpose or your life work or the unfolding of your life pro, um, um, your life path, right? And so I feel like you have the, again, the ability to co-create your experience or you're being given the opportunity to change that, to really kind of take the reins as it were, okay? To allow your life purpose to come into play to influence how you move through your life which i mean we have this passion energy coming through with the cheetah as well so i feel like there's something here for you cancer where you're being given the opportunity to see and recognize the things that the things that you're passionate about and to bring them into your experience to co-create your reality take that as it resonates with you but that is absolutely um what i feel coming through here we also have here the black egg. So this is a spiritual card and I'm going to read from the guidebook here for you with this. Um, but it, it feels to me like for some of you, there's this coming out of darkness period or dark night of the soul period or quiet period. Um, I don't know why, but I'm getting kind of like plant in the ground or seed in the, in the soil type of energy here. And maybe you don't even realize that you've been going through this dark period, but I do feel like there, there's been, there may have been hints or clues, okay, that, that maybe, that it, it being brought to your attention, you're like, oh, yeah, I could see that, <laughs> right? And maybe this doesn't apply to everyone, but it definitely feels like this, this quiet or, or something maybe coming out of that space. But let's pop into the book here. I'm going to read for you about the black um the black egg and again apply this to what you have the opportunity to change if i can find it doo, 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 doo. there we are okay this is really interesting so it does say here speaking from an authentic voice or the truth let me just The black egg contains one of life's essential treasures, the truth. Inside of it resides no confusion, excuses, small talk, noise, or lies, not even white ones. This living and breathing vessel harbors only that which rings true. When this essence is in balance, we speak slowly and clearly. We are drawn to activities like writing, reading, teaching, singing, or perhaps public speaking. Sounds draw us in. Books draw us in. The concept of truth itself draws us in. We start asking questions like, what do I know to be true about myself? And what is true about the world? When the energy of the black egg is not yet accessed, we speak from an unsure place. We say things others want to hear gossip or repeat stories to justify our subpar behavior. So I'm just going to pause for a moment because up here, the octopus, like I said, represents being gossipy, right? And I feel like this, this is no accident. Again, like, I feel like you really have this beautiful opportunity to change how you experience yourself in the world. And I do feel like that's been made very clear based on everything that's come through thus far. Okay. 
It goes on to say, we might even try to convince ourselves that we have no inner truth at all. The energy of the black egg hovers and waits for us to reconnect. It is available at every moment in every situation. It's the epicenter of truth, the birthplace of our voice. Again, right? Being assertive, creating boundaries. It goes on to say here, the subtle essence of this card resides at the base of the throat, at the Vishuddha Chakra. The ancient sages saw this center as the hub that governs our speech and expression. This would also be known as the throat chakra. Vishuddha translates as especially pure. The balance of this center is important for all of us, but is especially essential for writers, editors, musicians, and teachers, right? So this is about speaking your truth. You have the opportunity to get into alignment with that and your passions, right? To create an experience that allows you to look at the world from a more truthful, less clouded, or, or how would you say, I guess a, another way to put that would be tainted space, right? Um, not through the eyes of your wounding or trauma or self-loathing, but through the eyes of truth. To clarify, we have the Page of Swords or Daughter of Swords here. And this is an energy of, first, first of all, let me just back up a little bit because swords in general are about perspective and awareness and truth. So I do feel like this is something that is very, it's, it's a very, um, prominent, if you will, topic here or theme for your reading. Now, I'm not saying you're just running around telling lies on purpose, but you may certainly be lying to yourself, okay, or have been in the past. Now, with the Page of Swords or Daughter of Swords, this is a curiosity, a, a curious type of energy. This is one asking you to be truthful, to be just, to have fortitude, to use your mind, right? To explore, to gain knowledge. Okay. Cause it's a, again, it's a curious, but very bright type of energy. And I do feel like there's something here again with swords about being aware of the messages because pages can be indicative of messages aware of the messages that are being shown and given to you via your intuition, via synchronicity, via your dreams, via all of these sorts of things. Because I do feel like they're trying to point you in the direction of truth. This is where this card is going to lay. That's where I intended to put it from the get-go. Look at where it's pointing. Okay, let me just pull these up for you in the way that they're going to be laid on the table. Look at where that sword is pointing. It's pointing at the truth. It's pointing at you creating your experience based on truth, pointing you in the right direction, if you will. Okay. Leading you to that co-creative energy, leading you to truth, right? Allowing you to gain new levels of awareness. We also have the 10 of wands in the reverse. This is or can be an energy of being like burnt out, stressed, right? Look, it's like not being able to see the forest through the trees type of thing, right? Like being so, I, I'm really getting this energy of Yeah. I mean, again, it's that energy of like trying to do this and 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 this. And so what do you have the opportunity to change? You have the opportunity to seize control of your reality, to co-create it, to live in your truth and to stop burdening yourself to the point of exhaustion, to the point of overwhelm, right? To live a little bit less weighted. Okay. We also have here the three of cups in the reverse. So also right to clarify what you have the opportunity to change. It is again, this energy of 
gossip, first of all, which is fascinating AF that this keeps coming up again and again and again. This is like the third, third, third or fourth time now that this has shown up. Um, but this is also an energy of overindulgence, isolation. But, you know, the way I'm seeing it, it's interesting because it does say overindulgent. But we have this energy of like being overburdened, of taking on, like biting off more than you can chew type of energy, right? And I also got that energy of, you know, kind of um, maybe going through a bit of um, being in the dark or like a seed in the soil type of energy. So there is that isolation there as well. And I feel like this could potentially change that. You could be coming out of that to create happiness, friendship, community, and not in ways that are where you're overextending yourself. Right. In ways where you're allowed to be whatever it is that you are moment by moment. Right. Not having to overextend yourself to please others. That's how I'm seeing this. So what might you be celebrating now or in the future? Oh, we have a unicorn. <laughs> I love this card. It's so beautiful to me. Um, it is another spirit element card. So I am going to read from the book for this one as well. Um, but this is also, you know, kind of like that third eye card. Um, and I do believe they touch on that in the book. So, you know, I do feel like there's the celebration of gaining more of that spiritual awareness of self, maybe even establishing an opening, if you will, or a further opening of that third eye chakra, um, being able to gain awareness of things that maybe you didn't have before, kind of getting that insider's look, if you will. Let's take a peek here. What it's as what it says um, which, which one is this the six here we are yeah like i said i love this i love this because we've been talking about this the entire i shouldn't say the entire but a but several times right um having this awakening and and realizing that you are you know this divine being we have here with the unicorn reconnecting to higher wisdom or divinity, right? It's difficult to see, hear, or think of a unicorn without immediately questioning if it's real. Did they ever exist? Perhaps long, long ago. The mind answers, maybe, or it could be, or no way. This very contemplation ex explains our relationship with divinity and encapsulates our wavering belief in the unicorn. We wonder what divinity is. We wonder where our intuition comes from and if we can really trust it. We think about a higher power and our mind hesitates between yes, no, and maybe. Is it male or female? Does it have a name? Is it just a feeling? The unicorn card appears and wakes us up to curiosity, Okay, so I'm going to pause because that is what the Daughter of Swords represents, right? We talked about that. Curiosity. Can't make this stuff up, you guys. <laughs> okay. The unicorn card appears and wakes us up to curiosity about the higher self and divine. It is a card of questioning, exploring, and contemplating the inexplicable. The mind's eye knows there is something beyond our day-to-day -day lives, a deeper dimension to our experiences. The mind's eye reaches and reaches and reaches out to grasp something more. You are the unicorn, and you have begun your quest for the answers. It's no surprise the subtle essence of the unicorn card resides at the third eye, the exact place from which the unicorn's horn extends. This center is called, well, we're, we're just going to call it the command center because I can't say that word. <laughs> the ancient yogis believed it to be responsible for our intellect, intuition, and deep wisdom. Some say our two eyes see the past and present, while this third eye peers into the future. 
So, you know, I feel like there's this awakening that you could be celebrating potentially either now or in the future, really awakening you to your truth. Again, that energy was coming through already. And I just feel like this is further confirmation of that. From the tarot, we have the Son of Swords. So this is really interesting because we already have the Daughter or Page out. And now we have that next level. So this is interesting because what might you be celebrating in the future? Reaching that next level of awareness or perception with the Sun or Knight of Swords. And the Knight of Swords is a card of action. It is a card of defending beliefs motion. Okay. Having, um, that knowledge and being, um, authoritative or authoritative, pardon me on, right. So, so it's like, this is what I know to be true about myself, right? Very similarly with that unicorn that I know there's something more, right? So, so it's like standing in this is, this is what I know to be true. Again, defending those beliefs, right? And this is motion. This is no longer sitting on the sidelines and watching. This is taking action. This is putting practices into place to grow that, to, to nurture it and allow it to flourish, to continue to expand on that awareness, on those perceptions, on that truth to explore even further those curiosities, right? Gaining the knowledge. I love this because it's literally showing growth, right? Available to you. Okay. I, I kind of thought we might see this card. We also have the fool here in the reverse, which again, another major arcana card. And it's interesting AF. Why? even though it's in the reverse. Like I said before, the judgment is just one card away from completing, or rather that final card in the cycle of the major arcana. The fool is where we start over, right? The, the fool is coming full circle, coming back to the beginning, that next level. So here's what's interesting about this. I feel like all of this can lead you to that new beginning right? With the fool here, but with it being in reverse, this can be that energy of like fear of stepping off the ledge, fear of the new beginning, fear of letting, how would you say, it feels like fear of letting the wonder and the curiosity pull you, right? Because for whatever reason, I'm hearing this, this, this like fear of like, what if it's not real? What if I'm being foolish? What if, what if, you know, nothing ever comes of me do, of, of diving into this? Or what if I'm, you know, just being very naive? What if I don't know what the hell I'm doing? Right? So I feel like there's an opportunity here for you to be celebrating a new beginning, but you have to be willing to take, take the steps. You have to be willing to have that, uh, take that leap of faith, right? Let's see. Wow. Yeah. We also have the four of swords here showing up and this is an energy of contemplation. You have a lot of swords energy out here. Okay. Which tells me that there's this like in your head a lot <laughs> energy, right? Um, trying to make logical sense perhaps out of things that maybe you can't make sense out of logically. Okay. So I feel like there's this need for contemplation, this need to allow the light to illuminate what you may be missing. Okay. T to gain new perspectives. There's also this energy here. And this is, this is pure intuition by the way, but you know, there are these four swords here that are pointed down at this beautiful baby lamb and the lamb doesn't seem to be concerned at all which is very interesting to me for a number of reasons. But one being that the sun is there on that, that, you know, lamb's head, which I mean, in the position of the third eye, very much like that unicorn. Okay. So it's, I feel like there's this element of, I'm not afraid of the swords that are pointed at me because I know something you don't know. Right. 
I have access to knowledge that maybe you are unaware of. And even more interesting than that, the sun is the representation of the father or, or what you would call the father in Christianity, Bibl in, in, the, in a biblical sense, right? It is the father, the solar father spirit. And so there's this element here of like, I know things you don't know. And there is a force, a fatherly force protecting me. And even we have this masculine or father energy out here already, right? But when you think of this from a more divine or spiritual space, that solar father or the father, if you will, is an energy of protection. So it's like these earthly swords can be pointed at me all day long, but I know better. I can rest easy in what I now know. What I've learned. So take that as it resonates with you. But again, that last bit there is a lot, a lot intuition. Um, but I feel like there's also this energy of celebrating literal rest in the sense that I feel like well, with the four of swords, it is an energy of rest. And I feel like there's this energy of maybe your mind, again, has been like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do that. I feel like there's been this burden, this weight that's been carried. And I feel like um, should you allow yourself the opportunity, you could have the ability to be celebrating a bit of rest from that, reprieve from that. Okay. So for your advice, guidance, or encouragement, we do have here, wow, look at this. We have the number eight with community. Isn't that interesting? Because the three of cups in the upright does represent community. Even though it is in the reverse for you, I feel like you have the opportunity to change that and to establish a community where, again, you, you feel held, supported, um, like you don't, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to be bouncing all over the place, pleasing everyone, right? A community where you feel like you are truly held, truly welcomed, truly cared for, understood. And there aren't demands for you to meet in order to be welcomed, in order to feel held, loved, and cared for. Okay. I also feel like there could be, um, some of you who... And, th and this is just an intuitive little nudge. I feel like there could be some of you who are, um, how would you say, work in like a public service kind of sphere where maybe you're taking care of lots of people. Um, in which case, I feel like there is definitely something here for you to be being mindful of, especially when it comes to boundaries. Okay. Finally, wow, we have the Cobra here for you. I'm not going to lie. This is one of my favorite cards in this deck just because of it's, I feel like it's, there's something very powerful about it. Um, it is another fire energy. So it is a, an energy of action, of passion, of, of, um, creativity and inspiration. I feel like For some of you, part of the advice is, is, is to kind of, how would you say, okay, so just roll with me here for a sec. <laughs> um, if you guys have ever seen the, I don't even know what it is, um, what they're referred to specifically, but they're, you know, like the basket with a snake in it and the entertainer plays this music and the snake, you know, often a cobra or, or what seems to be a cobra at times comes, you know, out of the basket. And there's this energy here of, I mean, and, and I don't know, maybe it's not a cobra, but that's the image I'm getting in my head anyways. And I'm being asked to bring this up in the sense that you don't always have to appear when the music plays, right? So, so it's like you don't always have to respond to everything that is asking for your attention or, or calling to your attention or demanding your attention. You don't have to do that. It is a choice. Okay. But I am going to read this to you just because it's, I feel like I should. And again, it's a, 
I did not have any intention of having one of these animal spirit cards in this position. So let me just find it here and we'll read this. And interesting. Okay. So again, from a position of guidance, advice, or encouragement for you, it says pausing, waiting, the inner teacher. The cobra represents a teacher or spiritual guardian. The cobra hovers and watches, ever present, ever protecting, ever loving. The essence of the cobra is found deep within us in the form of the inner teacher and manifests externally in those special guides who've led us along our path. What would it feel like to be a student again? Where are you ready to learn? Remember the old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When in balance, a student of life, humble, wise. When out of balance, know-it-all, egocentric. To bring into balance, taking a class or study. Which is, again, you guys, I cannot move, I, ca I can't close this reading without saying. We have the same energy showing up. Uh, with, like with the daughter of swords, being a student, being curious, wanting to become more knowledgeable and learn more. And then again, with the son of swords, being that energy of being someone who is knowledgeable. Okay. So again, I feel like this is you being open to learning from a new space, learning and developing your spiritual awareness, your spiritual perception, what is there available to you behind what you're being shown outright, okay? Being open to expanding on your awareness and learning more, developing your truth, the truth, not what just is being shown to you, okay? So Cancer, that is what I have for you for May 2023. This has been an absolute pleasure reading for you. Thank you so much for joining me, sharing your time, your energy, your attention, and of course your company with me. I pray that something here has been helpful for you, valuable for you, and resonated with you in some way, shape, or form. If it has, please do the YouTube things by liking, sharing, subscribing, or commenting below. It really helps the channel to grow and tells YouTube that there may be something here for someone else as well. So thank you so much for doing that. Again, I pray that this month for you is incredibly expansive and that you are able to discover more and more about the truth of who you are, the depth of who you are, and how valuable it is to be your true and whole and full and healed self and what that is able to bring to the world because it is certainly needed. Have a beautiful month. Take care of your unique, courageous, assertive soul. Peace be with you and within you. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.